I spill my drink. Uh, anyway, so Geekom has the uh, Geekom A8, and that's a really nice Ryzen 9 or Ryzen 7 based system, depending on the configuration you get. But they're like, we're gonna take it to the max. So today we're gonna look at the Geekom AX8 Max, and this one has the Ryzen 7 8745HS. Now that has the Radeon 780M, so you can really game on this. I mean, like really i was i can't believe how fast the gaming performance was because it does perform at a little bit faster of a rate than most of the other 8745hs uh, systems that i've tested so first off what makes this the max well they've just thrown the maximum number of ports and everything on there so whereas the regular a8 has two usb 3.2 in the front this one has four usb 3.2 the a8 has one ethernet port this has two so let's go ahead and go through all of the specs of the one that we have. I always use OEM keys. I grab them over at whokeys.com. This is the price you're going to pay for Windows 11 Pro if you get a retail key. Let's check those prices on whokeys.com. $30 and we can do better. Put in TS25, click apply. There we go. 2322. You got Windows 11 Pro, Windows 11 Home, Windows 10 Home, and we have a couple different flavors of LTSC. 2021 gets updates until 2027, and the 2021 IoT edition gets updates until 2032. Also, if you're sick of paying that monthly fee for Office, you can get an offline version of Office. They've got 2019 and 2016. You know, 2016 will get most people by, in my opinion. You can also use the coupon code TS25 on these to save 25% on this as well. Let's go ahead and check out with our copy of Windows 11 Pro. All right, just put in my card info. There we go. Click on View Keys and Codes. Once you get to the User Center, click on Get the Key. You'll see your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that, copy that, press Start, and then type Activate. You'll see Activation Settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here it says Not Active. Just click on Change Product Key. Paste in our product key, and then click on Activate. Hey, look at that. Active. Head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. So I've got mine configured with the Radeon 8745HS, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 at 5600 mega transfers. And then we also have a one terabyte uh, MVME M.2 SSD. That's a mouthful. You have Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2 for your wireless connectivity. They've got the Ice Blast 2.0 cooling system and we'll test out the thermals in just a minute. And as far as uh, display support goes, well, you can do an 8K display. You can also do four 4K displays. Now, when it comes to the performance, if you care about tops and all that stuff, the Ryzen 980 945HS does have um, an APU, or a little small one anyway, 39 tops there. But the, the one that I'm looking at, because I guess they know I don't really care about all that stuff, it doesn't have the, the crazy AI processing power of the Ryzen 9, which I am totally fine with. I will never use it, so whatever. It's up to you, though, if you want that stuff, you're going to spend a little bit more money. Let's talk about the, the frame just a little bit. As you can see here, it does have that sleek Geekom design, and it has an all metal frame that can withstand 200 kilograms of pressure. It's one of the things about Geekom is they kind of go crazy when it comes to um, the testing and just the build quality. They do 300 and something like 20, 29 tests, I think it is, some ridiculous number of tests, static discharge tests, and uh, you know hot and cold tests, crazy environmental tests. They do all kinds of stuff. So yeah, whenever it comes to just you needing something rugged, something that can take a, a spill or work in crazy environments like your bedroom, I know what goes on in there, then Geekom's good for that. Let's take a look at all the ports on the physical unit. So on the front, we've got four USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A and also the 3.5 millimeter stereo uh, headset jack. It's for your full on headset and a power button. On one side, you've got the Kensington lock and then we have like just some mesh there for for breathing i suppose all right so on the back on this on both sides you've got usb 4 and that's full featured so they're both they both do display port just everything data everything and then we have uh, hdmi 2.0 we've got two of those one on each side then in the middle there we've got uh, two rj45 ports so that's your ethernet ports 2.5 gigabits then we have usb 3.2 gen 2 type a on top and a usb 2.0 on the bottom speaking of on the bottom let's go ahead and take this apart and see what makes it tick on the inside so inside here we can see we have some wad posit memory if you're someone who's trying to avoid micron because they're evil now just rest assured the wad posit stuff I'm pretty sure they're using Hynix unless they're using their own uh, manufacturing facilities. Now, I know China's kind of moving towards getting their own manufacturing set up. But um, last I heard, they're using uh, SK Hynix as their vendor for the memory modules. You know, there's some room there, but we don't have 
a spot for another M.2. So that's something, if you're gonna call it Max Geekom, give me one more M.2, that way I can run all kinds of stuff on this. As it is, it's already, it's fine, but be nice to have one more M.2. All right, let's go ahead and do some testing and play some games and see how this runs. All right, here's hardware info. We've got our Ryzen 7 8745HS. That's an eight core part with 16 threads. And then we have 16 megabytes of the L3 cache. And then over here, you can see our Radeon 780M. It's got 512 megabytes of its own DDR5, but it will share some of the system memory, which is a little bit slower, but still gives us some more headroom. When it comes to the network ports over here, both of those 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports are the Realtek RTL8125. And then we have a MediaTek MT7922 for the Wi-Fi 6E. Superposition. I was uh, surprised that this never dipped below 32 FPS. Running this on 1080p medium, we got 5208 as our score. Average FPS 38.95. Let's give Valley a go. We're going to run that at 1080p on the high setting. All right, and with Unigen Valley, we've got 75.2 FPS, minimum of 35.9. Overall score, 31. 45. All right, let's try some cyberpunk right here. I'm going to start on low and then we'll move up, see how we do. So on low, you can see we got texture quality low, everything's low, and we're leaving the AMD FX super resolution on auto. I do want to note that it looks really good. This is low, like you're looking at this game running on low. I think most games look really hideous on low, but not this one. And there we go, 50.15 FPS and the minimum 42.84 so i would probably play it like this maybe i would change a couple of different settings because i like to have you know nice smooth uh, frame rate and this is not going to feel choppy at all for a game like this but i know some people want to see what it looks like on medium so we'll try medium see how that goes all right medium still extremely playable 42.47 and the minimum 36.79 let's try high and see if it ever goes below 30. yes indeed Okay, so on high, we got an average of 33.41, minimum 27.8. I think you can try to find like a happy medium by turning a few things up and down, and you can make this game look really nice. So we're going to see how Baldur's Gate 3 runs, because it's, you know, after all the game of the decade. Running FSR 2.2, and I'm going to start off on medium and just see how it runs. All right, I guess that's what we'll do, because that's the medium setting. Right, so medium is looking pretty good. 45 FPS. Yes, indeed. Um, I think it's extremely playable now we're in the Underdark. So if you're in Baldur's Gate or somewhere that's really busy, you may have to turn it down to low, but yeah, I'm quite okay with this. Let's go ahead and give it a benchmark. All right, this worked really well. Let's also try high, shall we? All right, I'm going to crank up the overall preset to high and go back in and try it again. All right, here we are running on high. Hello, how you doing? All right, so let's see how this works. Um, running pretty good. We're getting in the 40s. You can run it on high, I think, in probably 90% of the... 90% of the time, since this is not a game that requires super fast reflexes or anything like that. But yeah, let's run around a little bit, see how it feels. Yeah, I think you can really play this on high. So once again, we're reaffirming what we already know about the 780M and this CPU combination. You can really play Baldur's Gate 3 quite well on this with some mods. This is our medium score on 1080p. You can see our average was 45 and then on high, our average was 41. So very similar. The minimum, 37 versus 34 as well. So probably play it on high unless you're like in Baldur's Gate then crank it down a little bit. So very good performance here with Baldur's Gate 3. So let me give you a few game recommendations for stuff that came out. Um, if you want to be, yeah, hardest boss, yeah. If you want to be frustrated, well, have I got the game for you? Now this is a game, let's just skip, skip, skip. Yes, we're skipping in. It's a game kind of like uh, Mega Man, and it is done in true 8-bit fashion. In fact, there might be a cartridge for this coming out for the Nintendo at some point. Luck level, the devil. I haven't even played this yet, but I just wanted to show you, because it just came out, and, uh, you know, James Rolfe and all that. All right, so the devil level looks a lot like Castlevania. It's just pulling from all the nostalgia. Yes, yes, yes. Get pissed. Yep, this is uh, definitely an old-school game. How do I get over there? There we go. Uh, this feels uh, very Nintendo. Actually, the controls are smoother than most Nintendo games, so that's something they got going for it, but it doesn't feel that different than like a, a Mega Man, but you know, whatever. Oh, sliding through there. Yes, I'm glad I have this now. Stop that. 
you with your stupid things. Get out of here. What if I got a super scope? What is this? How do I get down there? Am I gonna die? Watch. Let's see, I bet I can, I bet I can make it. Oh, sh I, I made it. Don't bother me. So yeah, if you're looking for some true 8-bit uh, challenging nonsense, well, we've got it right here. Don't bother me. Moving platforms make me, you stop it. Okay, I should uh, play and not talk, I guess. I wonder what the devil's weapon is gonna be. Anyway, yeah, you got this. So I wanted to show you a new indie game called Crush Depth, because it's a, it's a very short game you can play through quickly, but it looks cool. It's got the retro vibe and aesthetic. I guess I won't go into it too awful gotcha. much. And honestly, this is the only time I've had to play it. I've been working so much and doing so much. So it's like I'm kind of just like trying to play it right now while working, but you know. Even though we've got like the pixelization going on, I like the way it looks quite a bit. I've got a control panel here. So if you feel like exploring a station, a nice good sized station, it's not a hugely long game, but if you feel like exploring a substation at the bottom of the ocean, then I think this is a game for you. I'm going to come back and play this quite a bit, I think. It's exactly what I want to play right now for some reason. That's Crush Depth. Not the U-Boat Simulator, a different game. But I'll put a link below. When it comes to our productivity benchmarks, we did Geekbench. And the single core score on that is 2600. The multi-core is 13032. Scroll down there. You can pause if you want to see any of these tests individually. As far as OpenCL goes, Got a nice score of 29,802. And again, here's the individual tests. Looking at Cinebench, if we look at our single core, you can see nice strong single core performance. I like these 8745 HS CPUs, 1716 on the single core. And then the multi-core score, give me the multi-core, there we go, is just below the old Threadripper. So we're getting almost Threadripper performance with the tiny CPU, we've come a long way. 16,101 for the multi-core. All right, so we're testing out the heat and the and the temps, doing a stability test here with ADA64 running at 100% for almost an hour, 53 minutes. And you can see it spiked to 90, but it's been kind of hovering between 83 and 85 the whole time, just had one little spike. 90's fine, um, I don't want it to go to 95, but 90's okay. I mean, these are like tiny little CPUs and all, but 84 is, totally acceptable to be running you know for this long so i'm happy with that let's go ahead and test out the sound whatever my tea's in the way i, d I don't care all right so my room is it's loud it's like 45 decibels but uh yes there we go 50.6 so you can hear it it doesn't have that super high pitched whir so it doesn't sound bad it's not the quietest system i've ever heard but it um uh, sounds decent you know what i mean it doesn't like sound all tinny and worry and little i suppose so it sounds bigger than some of the other mini pcs if that makes any sense 50.6 decibels is what we're dealing with here we also have a very fast m.2 you can see our read speed 7052.64 and our write 6103 the hottest it got during the write over here was 47 degrees so also the cooling unit they have on there the heat sink and everything is working very well it idles uh, right now between 39 and 44 but it's the very very stable temperatures between the idle and, and this and also the differentiation makes me feel like this is going to last a long time because one of the things that you know makes things degrade the most is when the the heat is going up and down and up and down and up and down but this is very consistent so good job on the cooling for the m.2 all right i want to show you something i just finished doing my um best of mini pc video and i've got like four mini pcs in in the last week so i had to test them all of them like dying here from all the numbers but i was a little bit surprised that this ryzen 7 is about as fast as the ryzen 9 in most of my testing like it's faster than the other ryzen 7 in some tests the b link here i'm gonna make a video on this soon i don't recommend this one just yet gotta like but anyway it's got the new CPU, but yeah, I, I love this 8745HS. Let me just show you some of the gaming performance that I got stacked up against the competition right here. So check that out. This one, it's, why is it faster than some of the Ryzen 9 in Baldur's Gate 3 on medium? I don't understand. The minimum and also the 1% lows are a little bit lower. See, that's where, you know, it's a little bit lower here. The, the beefier CPUs don't have quite as much of a hitch, but still, the overall gaming performance, even on high, 
it's right up there with the rise of nine. Let's see how the 1% lows are. Oh, the 1% lows on high were even better. What, what, what went on? I don't even know what went on. Weird, so it was a stutter somewhere. And then Cyberpunk as well. Check that out. It is very close to the performance of the Ryzen 9s that are more expensive. Now there was high, that's the minimum. And then in, on medium, extremely playable. It's very funny, like all these have the same CPU. So I guess Cyberpunk seems to be more, um, you know, CPU, I mean GPU, I'm sorry. They all have the same GPU. There's no such thing as a 780M. It's a 7 or 7080M. It's a 780M, but whatever. You get the idea. It stacks up really well against some of the bigger you know, take a look at that. I, I don't I was very impressed. You can go watch the video where I talk about, um, you know, all the best mini PCs of the year. But I think for the price, it stacks up at a really nice spot, uh, especially if you're able to grab it right now. That's a, that's a really good price in my opinion. So if you can get it on sale, I'll put a link down in the description. If you can get it on sale for that price, it's a really nice way to go. Let me know what you think about the Geekom AX8 Max in the Ryzen 7 flavor. And I'll see you in the comments.